Welcome to this online training everyone. My name is actually Andrew Roberts. I'm not going to be um, the person presenting this webinar. I'll introduce you very, very shortly to Steve Grant. Um, while I'm doing that, Steve, just ensure that you press show your screen um, if you can please so people can actually see your presentation. So just to make sure you can actually all hear me, can you just please uh, raise your little hand on the hand icon on the dashboard? just want to make sure you can actually all hear me. Um, okay, can you, there's a, little, there's a little hand on the hand icon, lots of little hands going up, fantastic. Um, great, I'll just lower those down. So huge welcome to you all. And I am just here to answer your questions as we go through this webinar. Um, Steve's gonna concentrate on presenting, so use the chat box to say hi or, or ask any questions and, and I'll do my best to respond to those as we go along. Um, just to introduce Steve to you, I've known Steve now for many, many years. I've been in business myself for around about 15 years. Hopefully very shortly we'll get Steve to show a picture of uh, what he looks like. But if you've never met Steve, he's like, he's huge. He's about six foot, I don't know, eight <laughs> tall. Um, he, he, looks, he looks like a, he's just a, a big build and, and very much a, a gym owner. Um, I've been very fortunate to watch and participate and see Steve's career over the years. I've watched him build one of Australia's top gyms. I've seen him crack education-based marketing, uh, which I'm sure and I hope he's going to talk about today. And I've seen him really master selling personal training, like really, really doing it at a very, very high level, um, bringing lots of personal training clients in and, 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 and maintaining them for, for a long, long time. I've watched him build up and sell his business. Now, I've also watched one of, of Steve's strategies. Um, he's really, really good at hanging out with other successful gym owners, other business owners. And, and, and I've watched him learn from other really successful gym owners and I've seen the way he implements it into his business. And he sold his business and, and he's, travel, he's been traveling the world and, and living it up, basically. And it wasn't a surprise for me when, when Jim, when I asked, when I asked Steve, what are you going to do next? When he said, look, I want to help gym owners. I want to, I want to take what I've learned and I want to apply that and pass back the, the knowledge that I've been so lucky to be able to, you know, grow my gym and, and eventually sell it. And so I, when, when Steve said that, it just was, it just, it was a given. It was so obvious that that's what he should do. And, and, um, and here he is today passing back, I'm sure, his best, ideas and, and, and you really are in for a fantastic hour. So uh, again, my, my advice is to watch multitasking, it's so easy to do that. Um, really pay attention, have some fun, write down some notes, um, but I'm sure Steve's got a, an amazing hour in, in for all you. So without further ado, welcome Steve, can you hear me okay? I can, thanks Andrew, that was... Um... No worries. Can you share your webcam briefly, Steve, just so we can actually uh, get get a get a peek to see whether we can actually see just just so everyone can say hi. Yeah, I can I can try. I'm not sure if you you should be able to see me now. Hey guys, there he is for, uh, for logging in. I'm I'm just in my home office here in uh, Coleroy, New South Wales. Um, the morning was I did a six a.m. spin class. And then I've spent the rest of the day just getting organised for this session today, making sure I've um, jam-packed the, the full hour full of ideas for you guys to take away and implement into your own gyms. So um, make sure you've got something uh, handy that you can actually write on because I know you'll get a lot out of it. I'll, um, I'll turn the camera off just so that um, we can maximise bandwidth and you can hear me throughout. And we'll... Um, We'll make a start. So as you can see, the, uh, the, the heading or the, the title for this free webinar today is called Hidden Gym Profits. And it's um, something I'm absolutely pumped about, I guess, delivering to you because the, the gym industry has changed dramatically um, over the, the last decade particularly. And I think um, what sort of worked perhaps 10 years ago isn't isn't even around these days and um, what I want to share is what's what's working not only in the best gyms in Australia currently but also in the best gyms around the world so let's get stuck straight into it the um, 
the I guess the the thing that you will uh, discover here is how there's there's at least a hundred thousand dollars worth of hidden profits in in each of your gyms, and um, I, I found that personally in in my gym in Monavale, New South Wales, and um, I want to show you where to look for these sort of hidden profits so you can uh, maximise that lifestyle and the the ch choice to do what you you wish to do with it. So. There's there's my photo. It's um it's not a good one, but um Andrew did a, a great introduction there. He he sort of explained. I've I've been in the fitness industry for many years. I think I did my cert for personal trainer in 1997 while I was uh, studying at, at Wollongong Uni, and um I yeah I was a PT. I was in group fitness. I've done sort of gym sales and manager roles and um. And excited to then to, to go on and open my own gym for for the last eight years, which I, I sold in July 2015. And um, I guess the the thing that um that I want to share most today, and the thing that I, I hope you take away, is that the through that sort of trial and error, I I was able to to get to a point where I could make somewhere between three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars per year. Um, working just 12 hours a week and I think everyone loves the fitness industry I think we all sort of progress through the ranks and we go into manager and owner and and we're still in the industry if we love it but I think sometimes we come a bit of a um, we become chained to our, our facility and we're working 60 and 80 hours a week and uh, for me that that just wasn't what I was interested in so today's session um, is not a university lecture um, if if I can have your permission to, I just want to cut through all that sort of traditional business coaching BS and um, just cut straight to that content that affects you, the, the gym owners and gym managers most, and um, have a bit of fun along the way. So the three topics we're going to cover is how to generate as much as 100 extra uh, in $100,000 in extra profit from your gym business and uniquely doing this without adding a single new member. The second thing is how to cut your gym running costs by up to 20%. And the third one, which I think will raise a few eyebrows and, and trigger some interest there, is how you can start charging premium rates and still, still have more people attending your gym and members of your gym than, uh, than your competition. Does that sound good? Just checking that everyone's still there. Raise your hand if that, that sounds okay. Very cool. Okay. Um, at the end of today's uh, webinar, if uh, you do want to hang around, I'm actually going to share with you how four of Australia's top fitness entrepreneurs would add 300k extra profit to your gym by midway through 2016. And this information isn't available anywhere else. So make sure you stick around for that as well. So let me ask, let's get you guys involved. So if, again, if it is your first time in a webinar, there's a little section there on the right hand side where you can participate. One is the little hand signal where you can sort of just vote for things and let me know you're there. The other one is the little question box. So I'm interested to get some feedback now and ask you guys that, that are out there on the coal face, what's the hardest part about owning a successful gym business in 2016? Let's get some feedback. Yeah, so I'll read those out as they come in, um, Steve, and uh, just to make sure people, you can put that in your little chat box on the right-hand side, and as they come in, um, I read some of these out. Yeah, um, I hope I pronounced your, your name correctly. KO says too much competition. Lute's got staff and member retention. Member retention is another one. Interesting retention. Yeah, competition, competition, um, marketing. Interesting, Steve. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised by these answers, and it's it's good to know I'm I'm in front of the right people. You know, it's uh, this if if you're sharing those sort of that feedback, you're definitely in the right place today, and. Um, mm. I, I guess the thing I, I wanted to share, when I opened a gym in 2007 in Sydney and, uh, and just sold it last year, and if someone asked me today, you know, what, what changed from when you opened compared to, to today, well, everything's changed. Um, when we talk about more competition, 
there's literally five times the amount of competition in your local area and um, uh, yeah no doubt you're actually you're experiencing a it, it is a lot harder to re recruit good people and it's um, it's definitely harder to retain clients who have so many other options uh, elsewhere um, unfortunately that that other sort of thing that's come into our industry is the the price wars so I, I guess there's um, one train of thought is that if, if so-and-so is offering memberships at $20 a week and I offer it for, for $10 a week, well, I'll, I'll win some market share. But unfortunately, for people that are participating in a, in a price war, no one's actually making any money. So you, you might lose clients to someone that's, um, you know, a crunch fitness or $5.95 a week or something like that, but there, there's no no profit in that. So it's um, it's a not a... A good place to be moving into. The third big change isn't necessarily just the fitness industry, but it's just business in general in 2016, and it's it's the result of marketing clutter. So 20 years ago, the average Australian would see about 3,000 marketing messages a day, and it's pretty that's pretty scary. 3,000 messages, but as of like 2015, 2016, we're actually now. Um, we're, we're in front of 30,000 messages a day. So as you can see there in the notes, the, the end result for us if we're running gyms is that we actually need to spend three times as much with our marketing budget. But even after doing that, we're only really ever going to get about 50% of the, the return back from, from that investment, which makes it hard. My story, um, I mentioned I've been in the industry for a long time, but I, I wanted to use this photo of the snail crawling along. It's... Um, Particularly in those early years, despite me trying as hard as I can, I, I did feel like the snail. I wasn't actually making a lot of progress. I wasn't getting better in those early years. And um, it was, um, yeah, I felt like I was just, you know, fighting to keep my head above water. I think um, the big thing that I, I probably missed was I didn't have a, a good understanding of how to even write a business plan or what that should look like. I didn't have like outcome-based goals and I, I didn't know who to actually go and chat to and, and who had that sort of um, track record that I could get some advice and things from. Um, I guess eventually I just, I, I hit breaking point. My, my health and my social life were getting absolutely smashed. I, I knew something had to change. So I, um, I just started looking for, um, for other other answers, I guess, with some sort of solution for a way that I could reduce my hours while still making more money. And yeah, at the time, there's, there was definitely no webinar like this to sort of help out if you're a gym owner and you, you were frustrated. The, um, the point I got to, I guess you, you can anticipate, was that I, I had to go and figure it out myself and I started looking into books. I was, I was reading you know, Richard Branson stuff on marketing and Seth Godin stuff on team culture. Um, anything you know, Tim Ferriss did with the four-hour work week was good for time management, and I had to just go and track down that information. And I was studying different business models, like both inside the fitness industry, but also outside. Whether it was real estate or whether it was a, a restaurant industry, I wanted to see what what worked and could be sort of, um, I guess, adapted to what I was doing. Um, naturally, that involved you know doing stuff after after work. So I attended courses on weekends and. I was doing a lot of that sort of study at night. Um, the other thing I did was I, I tracked down some some people that could help and um, a couple of good mentors that helped me to really start getting some traction uh, in my, my business career. Um, as an end result, and, and just before we get into it, I, I guess the, the unique thing I was able to do is put a, a business model together that was light years in front of everyone else in the fitness industry. And what was good about it was that I was I was just working smarter, not harder. Um, it, it enabled me, as I mentioned before, to to leverage myself. So I was making over three hundred grand a year, but with you know ten to twelve hours a week of actual time there in my business. And um, you know the 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 big sort of learning there. The the, the heading there says experience is important, and I. I guess I was sort of conscious of that. I figured there'd be a point if I just kept practicing, I'd get used to it. And, you know, maybe I was only young and, and that's why I wasn't good at it. But what I, I since learnt was that although experience is important, it's the right theory that is actually the most important. 
So rather than me spending the next 10 to 20 years kind of slogging it out like the majority of gym owners, you know, fighting for that one extra client here or against the, the competition, I was looking for the shortcut. I wanted the blueprint, the proven sort of system that could, um, you know, just accelerate me in front of everyone. Um, the, the outcome, as I mentioned before, and the reason I, I want to share that, um, this is what I'm passionate about is, is passing on these things. It's enabled my wife and I and our kids an, an opportunity to have a good lifestyle. We're, we're overseas every year. Uh, we own a house outright on the beaches um, at 36, which I, I guess is pretty unique still for um, for that age. But it's um, it's something I'm passionate about doing, and so that, that's a little bit about me and and why I feel um, so passionate about sharing the content today. Um, if you've got your pen ready or you've got a little iPad there to take some notes, let's get stuck into it. So there's three pieces of content I want to deliver today. The first one in unlocking hidden gym profits. In my experience, every single gym has hidden profits just laying there dormant. And I think there's little things that we could be doing or things that we can be offering to our existing member base that are literally just going untapped. Um, in the promotion, I mentioned that you could add up to $100,000 of extra profit by looking at these, these hidden um, or un, untapped sort of things, um, you know, that's conservative. You, you've already, for many of you, perhaps already got a, a membership base of 500 people or 600 people or whatever it might be, but there's, um, if, if we can sort of tap into these things and access an extra 100 grand of profit, I, I want you to sort of picture perhaps what you might actually do with that, um, and I, I don't really mind what, what you choose to do with it, but uh, these were the sort of examples that came to mind for me. I, I think the additional cash just helps with lifestyle. You know, the, the choice in restaurants you go to or, um, you know, the, the clothes and stuff you might choose. The, the one in the middle is where, what I'm most passionate about, and that's investing into um, property and, um, and travel, I guess, the, the top right one there as well. So, I, I'm tending to take profits from a gym, using that as the cash cow, investing into sort of long-term wealth and trying to match it up with lifestyle. Um, the other cool stuff that the images sort of suggest there is 100K gives you a really good manager. So if you're currently in there bashing out really big hours to have some, some level of success in your gym, reality is you can attract some really good quality people when you're making a little bit more money because you can afford to pay for that top quality talent. Um, the, the picture in the middle uh, at the bottom there, th that's something that sort of enabled us to do is, is pay for good schools for our kids and of course there's toys and stuff like cars as well. But again, regardless of what it is, um, I, th I just think 100K extra profit each year, every year, is, um, is pretty cool and it's exciting to think what, what you might do with it. So getting into the solutions, the, the first one is creating additional revenue streams. I'm going to move through these um, quite fast and we'll, we'll have a, a second for uh, questions at the end of this. So my first tip um, in ad adding an additional revenue stream, I'm going to go through about five or six of these today and I've literally got you know 10 or 20 that I think could add value, but the first one's um, offering a $99 program design online. So this would be where you, you might sort of get organized, um, spend two hours one day designing three program templates for weight loss, three for muscle gain, three for someone that's training for a marathon, and leverage your time but just make it available through social media and on your website and things like that, that if someone wants a program designed for them, they can come and see you to get that done. Now, the reality is if you, you're good at what you do, you should be able to then tailor that program to suit the, individu in the individual. But let's, let's be honest, 95% of the actual work can be done in advance where we, we sort of have these guiding principles in fitness. If you want to put on mass, we need to follow certain principles. If you want to lose body fat, you need to lose. You need to follow certain principles. So, I think, um, yeah, we can set that up well and gain a lot of leverage. And the thing I've put there in the red, it just says that if if you only sold two of these a week um, out of your gym or you know from people out there in the general public, you're adding another ten thousand dollars in in revenue to your gym. Um, this could be people who 
like the program you've designed and then you say, hey, are you interested in coming and perhaps using our gym to implement your program? Or it might be someone that's already training inside your gym who um, just wants a little bit more direction and, um, and will pay for that service so they, they're getting better results. So that's the first one. The second one is adding a full range of products online. So one of the big things I saw, I had an opportunity to spend about, uh, what, three or four months in uh, America and Canada last year. And the thing that's quite popular in the States at the moment is where people are able to get a lot of the things that they like from the, the one provider. Um, the reason this seems to work is that people like buying off someone that they know. They like the convenience of not having to sort of leave the gym and then go to a shoe store or, the, or go to a um, supplement store sort of separately. But you've also got a relationship with those people. So they, they, they like to sort of, they trust your opinion on things. And you might um, set this up in a way where you're, you know, you've got a, an online or e-commerce sort of site set up and people order things online, pay for them online, and then just come and pick them up in the gym during the week. Or secondly, you might set it up where you've simply got a link or a, you know, a, a, a landing page there where all your clients can access these things through another provider and you're simply getting a cut of each of the sales. Um, things like um, boxing gloves, things like running shoes, things like compression tights. Um, you can sell, you know, uh, glucosamine for joints. You could sell fish oils. You could sell detox sort of programs. There's so many little extras that you know every single person that comes into your gym is currently paying for 10 minutes after they walk out your door. Why not have some of this associated with your gym? So they're the two 99 program design online. You could charge what you want for that, but I think 99 should be the cheapest. And setting up a small uh, e-commerce site where there are people that know and trust you and hear from you in social media and hear your recommendations about fish oils via email, they can then just get a, a convenient little link in the email to go through and purchase it. Other revenue streams. The next one is outdoor boot camp. So I did this one where I... I actually was offering group classes and things as part of the gym already, but I actually wanted to rev it up and create something special. So we went and got the battle ropes and the tires and the sandbags and heaps of cool stuff, which obviously costs a bit of money to set up initially, but then started charging it out where people could come to a six-week course for $150. Um, they might do a Tuesday and a Thursday for, for six weeks, and $150 represents a lot of value for people that just need a bit of a push along or love that sort of cultural aspect of taking part in something like a boot camp. Um, the reality is, you, you like I was paying about $50 a session to a, a trainer to take it. So there's about um, $600 in wages, but you're still going to profit about $3,000 each time you do one of these six-week modules. Um, you could do a module twice a year, you could do a six-week module four times a year and sort of do one in autumn, one in spring, summer, winter, but it's, um, you know, there's, there's $12,000 of profit after wages in that sort of model. Uh, one of my clients at the moment is renting out a room or a small space in his gym to a massage therapist. Um, that's over three, I think 365 a week he's actually charging, but that what that actually means to him is that he's, he's generating about $18,000 um, or he's, he's getting an $18,000 reduction in the rent that he's paying. Um, many of us have sort of rooms that are quiet at lunchtime or just a little space that a, a, a chiropractor or a massage therapist would be absolutely stoked to come in and use because they get access to your, your client base and they're very convenient to everyone as well. Um, the next one, depending on what your model is, um, but you might actually close or have quiet periods in your facility at some time in the week where you can just charge out to, to rent out that space. So you might have a yoga teacher or coming in on, on a Sunday afternoon if you're not open and pay to rent that space. Or there might be someone that's doing Cert 4 or first aid courses. I think there's real easy opportunities to remember you're, you've actually got the facility and you've got the space. So if you're not using it, you want to make sure you're, you're making some money for someone else using it. The last one I've got on this page is creating a package for schools. So one of the, the gym owners I'm working with, um, 
has a great reputation in the area. They're, they're known for good yoga classes. Um, and I think one of the, the clients at the, at the gym just said that a, a daughter goes to the private school. Is there any way you could sort of get involved there? Now, what? because I've, I've worked in schools myself, I, I understand that each private school has a huge kitty of money that they can allocate to things like this. So in this scenario, we are able to charge um, $20 per class for each student to attend. We had 25 uh, kids in each class. And a 12-week program, again, after you're paying wages for someone, is about five and a half grand profit. The beauty of these private schools, not only do they have the money to pay you to go and do it, but you can, um, they've often got the facilities as well. So this, may, this doesn't have to impact on any of the other classes and things that you're currently offering, but instead you're just sending a staff member there, you know, perhaps once or twice a week to a, a local school that might be just around the corner. Two more for you. So keep writing these down. You can obviously work through um, a bit more of the detail and try and adapt it to your model as best as you can. But I think it's important to offer a few different price points. So I think some gyms are offering one-on-one -on -one personal training and they do it okay. Personally, I, I preferred the employment model. I, I wasn't charging $250 or $300 a week for a, for a trainer to come and rent my space. Instead, I would, um, when they came in to join the gym, I would sell some personal training to them, allocate them to a trainer, and literally profit $1,000 per trainer a week. So I think there's a, a, an opportunity there that if you're finding it hard to compete with all this competition around you, there's revenue inside your gym by perhaps even flipping the model that you're using at the moment and making more profit from all the sessions that are already happening in there. Um, the other one is um, if someone can't afford to pay, you know, 120 an hour for a, a PT, they might be quite happy to come to a, like a semi-private session for, you know, four on one or a, a one on eight or something like that. Um, the best gyms I'm looking at and the best gyms I'm working with are the ones that are matching membership income with PT income or membership income with small group, group training income. The last one on the page there is weekly nutrition coaching. Coaching. I left this as an example because, again, I personally had it. I had a client with a huge weight loss goal, but like many people that have that much weight to lose, um, wasn't that comfortable to come in and exercise or work out in a gym. So we just set up a 30-minute uh, nutrition coaching session once a week. Um, this was I was charging out at $55 a session. We just did it in one of the little consultation rooms you might use for a, uh, a walk-in inquiry or something like that. And all, all we essentially did each week, they'd come in, they'd weigh in, we'd have a quick look through his food diary, we'd talk about some of the challenge he might have on the weekend um, if he's a, away from home or travelling or something. Or, But it was um, it's these sessions. So we often talk about the importance of nutrition for our results. Um, I just think it's really easy to attach nutrition coaching sessions on a regular basis to um, for those people that are serious about weight loss. Very cool. So I've gone through a whole heap of things there. Robbo, you might be able to give me a hand here. Let's get some feedback um, in that little uh, question box on the right-hand side again. Fantastic. So obviously just to share in there one thing that you've taken from that last section and I'd also invite you might have another idea as to what else can you do to increase income without adding another member. I think just to, um, while people are thinking about that Steve as well, um, that so many people have put so much focus into the, the new members that often the, the goal as, as you point out is just the, it's clear and I've seen you do it isn't it, you, you put equal energy into existing members um, to, to find that hidden profit and and it adds up by the by the, the look of what you've just taught just how it, it quickly adds up um, so yeah would love to hear if anyone's got any um, one thing you've taken away from that section so far or anything else to add please put into the little chat box uh, before Steve moves on um, yeah, so definitely on the PT, Steve, we've got someone um, sharing that, oh, the, the concept of nutrition. Um, I mean, someone, yeah, the, the online programs, 
is is some we've got uh, that coming through as well. So I'll let you move on though, Steve. But oh, what else have we got? Sorry, I've got a couple more. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading these as could well. Could also increase could also increase membership prices slightly. Um, learn that we need to. Well, what have we got here? Learn that we need to. Can't quite read all that. Uh, create some new packages to drive revenue. Absolutely. And looking at the PT model of employing rather than the rent-based model. Absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you. Fantastic, okay. Steve. So I'll, I don't think there's any questions rather than a couple of statements. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. And look, I um, I I just want to really re-emphasize that point that the the hardest part, in my opinion in the fitness industry is doing all your fit out and getting started, just getting some critical mass where you've got, you know, a couple of hundred people in there that are coming in to use your facilities. And I think it makes total sense just to have a very clean model right at the start there where your, um, you know, your, your membership's $25 a week, whatever it might be. But the, the reality is there's a point at which we might actually top out and we, we don't have space to put on another 500 members and there's easy revenue just sitting there. Um, alternatively, that's um, if there's lots of competition around and everyone's fighting for that next 10 members at the end of January, I think it's really easy to increase the average spend of the, the people that are already inside your business. So I challenge you to um, consider some of those, those um, practical ideas that I've used in my gym. Um, before we get on to solution number two, remember at the end of the session I'm revealing how Australia's top fitness entrepreneurs would add an extra 300K to your gym business by mid-2016. So here we go. Let's move into cutting gym expenses. Now, no one likes to pay more than they need to, and I think you'll probably um, want to write down some of these ideas. Before I do this and I share a few ideas on how to do it, again, quick feedback. What, how much is it, are you actually paying? What are your expenses? So on that, that chat box on the right-hand side, tell me how much do you actually need to earn each month before you start making some profit? You can see five five thousand dollars. Yeah, twenty k we've got there. Twenty a month. Twenty is a big site. Yeah, it's a, it's a big uh, it's a big num it's a very important number. You break even. We've got 22K, we've got 7K, we've got 35K. I won't read out names. Um, staff's our major expense. Our gym costs us 4K a week. Uh, someone's got 60K a month, so ooh, 30K. Wow, big big costs. Well, yeah, a mixture, clearly. Um, Look, there's there's so, definitely some of these engines, Robbo, that require more expenses, and I, I, I don't think it's realistic to think that you're just going to drop them down to 4K a week or whatever some of the lower ones were um, if yeah. you're running one of those big models. But I think what's what I want to stress here is that it doesn't actually matter how many members you have. It doesn't matter how many staff you employ. These are actually the wrong numbers to be looking at. The important numbers are profit, and for that one to actually be working, I guess it's expenses. We, we need to, um, it seems obvious, but we, we need to minimise how much of this wastage is going out, paying for things that um, we, we can be actually accessing cheaper. So again, let's, let's work out how we can reduce the cost by renegotiating some of the fees we're paying and how we might be able to trim the fat. So the first one is the, the use of a bookkeeper. So this is something that I moved into doing, particularly in the last five years of running a business where I would pay a bookkeeper $50 an hour to prepare my P&Ls so that on the 15th of the next month, um, so two weeks after I've actually finished that, like January, for example, I would on the 15th of February be able to sit down and actually analyze my expenses. Now, $50 an hour isn't a lot of money for someone that can get this together really fast, for someone who can offer me three um, observations of the P&Ls and things that they, they, they notice to be irregular. They might, for example, notice that um, your electricity has gone up 20%. They might notice that you accidentally pilled a, uh, paid a bill twice or that you forgot to pay something important like your rent or um, I guess what we're looking for is a trend there where 
maybe your marketing expenses have gone up 10% every month for the last six months. Now, by, by analysing these numbers, I think we become aware of what needs to be paid for and, and is literally at the best price it can be and what shouldn't be actually coming out at that price and we start to target those things. So um, once my bookkeeper's actually prepared P&Ls and I've gone through the numbers myself, I do it with a highlighter and I print it out, I would then go and find a, a, a mate of mine who has a gym that's almost the same. So if it's a 24-hour model that you've got, find an, a friend of yours that also has a 24-hour um, gym model, get, get your P&Ls out and actually go and have a coffee together. And it sounds painful, like I'm, I'm not someone that sort of uh, was born with an interest in the numbers and, and what was actually, what was actually going to, um, you know, how to read a profit statement and things like that. But um, when you start finding things, you might sort of, you might swear for 10 minutes when you work out you've paid more than you needed to, but then you're actually going to start saving that money each and every month going forward and that money goes into your, your profit line. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. The, the obvious one at the bottom there, claim as much tax as possible. So we understand that anything that we can claim as a tax deduction comes off our total taxable income at the end of the year. So if we, we take um, our trainers out or our, our team or staff out uh, for lunch or we do something, buy them a, a personal development book, or whatever it might be, we want to be claiming these things on tax. We're obviously aware that there is a, a fringe benefit uh, threshold there where I think it's a, just under $300 for each person you employ that they can receive sort of um, benefits up to about that amount before they'll incur the, the fringe benefit tax or sorry, before you'll incur the fringe benefit tax. So if some of those receipts come in, it, it's always better to put down that they're a client gift or they're a client book or whatever it might be because we can um, and we should be looking after our clients as much as possible and the tax man will reward us if we are actually um, doing like spending some money on the people that we, we do business with. Renegotiating with your current providers. So I, this is something I do annually. I, I sit down and I shop around for the best rates for things like phones, internet, FPOS, um, direct debit fees, gym insurance. I want to be on the lowest rate and I don't know, I get frustrated. I'm a, I've got Foxtel on uh, the TV at home and it frustrates me when Foxtel advertise something and you're already a member, but the new thing they've come out with is half the price and you get this for free for six months and you get this sort of add-on. So it's quite easy for me to ring up Foxtel on this example and just say, hey, I've been a, a, um, a member for three years. I, I've just noticed that all the new people coming on are paying a lot less than I am, I'm actually considering um, you know, finishing up and perhaps going to a, a competitor. Now, the reality is if, if that was happening in your gym, you would give your manager or your staff member the, the ability to retain that person by the, the means that they see fit. So it's usually um, that they, they're able to match that best price for you. So, um, yeah, ring around, call the ANZ Bank, find out how much you're paying for SPOS fees each time there's a transaction there. Make sure your, your loan fees are at the lowest possible if you borrowed for equipment. Um, you get the idea. The next point there for, for saving some money is considering an ongoing maintenance plan. I, I was big on this for maintaining the, uh, the health of the equipment I used, while other people would sort of just fix things as they broke. The, the challenge with doing that is you, you are replacing equipment far more often. So if you actually look over the space of maybe three years or five years, the people that are having the ongoing maintenance um, are, are spending a lot less to actually keep the equipment running. Um, a big expense can be computers as well, so maintaining those I think is a good idea. Number three, look for um, discounts for paying upfront for annual memberships. So um, this could be things like your gym insurance, which I alluded to before, but it might even be just software or something you use. So you can get an annual um, a, a, a discount from an un, upfront payment for an annual membership for things like Dropbox or you might use Canva for graphic design. Maybe it's the CRM you're using, the music services. Um, I was you know, buying in bulk with things like photos so I could do my own marketing. Um, but again, look, look for opportunities for a saving there. 
And the last one on the list, just moving again quite quick, so for, for the sake of time, is to sack your worst staff member annually. And I laugh, I probably shouldn't laugh, but Jack Welsh, the um, former CEO of General Electric, um, used to do this ruthlessly. And I remember after reading his book, I, I thought about it and I actually looked at it. If you've got 10 staff, the reality is the number 10 is actually offering you the least. They're producing the least amount of money or the least amount of actual help in your business and they're costing you the most. So the, the best thing you can actually do is run a line through whoever's at the bottom of the list absolutely every year and you, you start to go straight back into the profit area. The next one is considering outsourcing. By outsourcing, I mean getting those low-value admin tasks or behind-the-scene tasks and paying someone to actually do these from, um, from the Philippines or from India or somewhere like that. Now, this has saved me up to 40 grand a year. Um, and the, the beauty of actually saving this money is that I can then use that money to pay my staff more per hour and retain them for longer. I can then outsource these things that are, you know, a $5 an hour, a $10 an hour sort of task so I can focus on the things that are my strengths. So I can focus on helping gym owners, not on sort of, um, you know, going through emails or social media posts or just real basic stuff that can be done behind the scenes. Um, I can see a couple of questions popping up there. The, so a couple of companies that I've used, I use Brickwork, B-R-I-C-K-W-O-R-K, -R -R which is um, based in India. The one I'm currently using is called EasyVA. So that's spelled E-Z-Y-V-A.com, EasyVA. These guys are based in the Philippines. You, you might pay anything from 6 to $13 an hour for a virtual assistant. Um, $6 if they're just doing some... Um, some email sort of filtering and scheduling and posting videos and, and blogs and stuff, or it might be $12 or $13 an hour if they're your, uh, your marketing assistant and they're doing things like SEO or, um, or things that require a, a bit more skill and a bit more training. But um, I cannot ex um, stress enough how much of a game changer this is. If, if you move away from doing those low-value tasks and you use your time, and the time of your best people um, to, to actually focus on the things that, that add the most value to your business. So that's the um, that honest kind of reality check for you is are you outsourcing? If you're not, why not? Um, I get it. I, I use local staff as well. And if, if someone comes through the front door of your business, you want the most enthusiastic, local, healthy sort of young personality in there that you can find. But it doesn't really matter who's doing the back end work. Um, you, you just need to find someone that can help you out with that role. All right, let's keep moving. Solution number three is to introduce a premium product or service. And um, this is this is something I, I guess to stand out from the competition. We spoke about if if the average Australian or New Zealand person seeing thirty thousand marketing messages a day, the reality is like Google came out last year and said you you now need to be in front of this like target population that you're advertising to 10 times before they would consider actually coming and using your service. I remember reading it used to be six or seven times you had to do it a couple of years ago. So we're now at 10 times. So the reality is we need to be looking for ways where that we can actually get in front of these people. And I like to link it back to a great book I read, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with the the book and the, the Blue Ocean Strategy. For those that aren't, it's, um, it talks about how in every industry there's a, a little pocket there where everyone's competing. It's full of sharks, it's ruthless, and there's, there's not much fun in that sort of uh, space because it's so competitive. However, if we look to the side and we, we're able to sort of reposition our brand or produce some sort of slight variation on our offering, there's an endless amount of opportunity and clients that are out there um, for the savvy uh, business owner. So in, in sort of running along that theme, I want to introduce the concept of educational-based marketing today and using this type of marketing 
to to get into the blue ocean and stop competing on price and stop competing with the the 10 other gyms that are around the corner from you now if you're new to educational based marketing the best way to describe it is where you're actually going to teach something of value and strategically influence the position that you want to hold in the minds of your your target audience why does it work? It works because it's cheap and allows you to get 10 contacts. So you can do educational-based marketing, marketing where you're offering some value to people. It might be on Facebook today. It might be by email tomorrow. But we need to clock up 10 contacts these days before we're going to have some breakthrough. So we can't afford to spend $3,000 on a half-page newspaper ad because it would be too expensive to do that 10 times, if that makes sense. The other reason why this method works is because 95% of gyms don't do it. They don't do it because they don't know how to, and they don't do it because they, they, they're not, um, you know, it's, they're, they're too busy sort of racing around trying to, you know, vacuum their gym or do something of, of low value. So what I want to show you now is a seven-step system. Make sure you're jotting these points down because it is a proven blueprint. If you follow these seven steps, I can guarantee you you're going to have a point of difference from everyone else in your current space and then you won't be competing anymore. Number one, let's get into it. So what position, in, you've got to identify what position in the marketplace that you wish to own. So when you're thinking of that, you're trying to think about what your strength is or where, where your genius sort of lies. Think about something that you can... Um, Perhaps read a little bit more on, you can do some more courses on, but something where if you sort of delegated those unimportant roles and you're focused on it, where well, you genuinely can be an expert in that area. Um, number two is claim your spot and, and be perceived as the expert. So the um, you might have determined that weight loss is your your um, the position that you want to own in your market. Maybe you've determined that it's Olympic lifting or rehab or Maybe you want to be the most fun or the best of value, whatever it, it, it can be. The tip that that Seth got in the, the great author spoke about is different is more important than bigger or better in our current market. I'll repeat that. So different is more important than bigger or better. Um, and it, it, an odd example, but one I'll share is a, a friend of mine's an equine chiropractor. This is a guy that's a chiropractor for horses. Now you can imagine if 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 you compare it to a, a traditional gym doing exactly the same as what everyone else is doing, there's 10 co competitors within a 5K radius. This guy isn't competing. This is a, a very specific sort of role that people are actually going to track him down for and there's not 10 equine chiropractors. So if you position yourself as the best at something, it doesn't then come down to price. If you position yourself at the best, it doesn't really matter how many competitors there are. Number three, um, I want you to um, – so we've done what position, claim your spot. Um, number three is handpick hand your marketing tactics and make sure they support that direction you're going for. So if you've claimed the spot as premium or, or you've said that it's going to be a boutique service or something – I obviously don't want to see you using uh, marketing stuff that involves cold calling or the back of shopper dockets or something, which obviously infers that you're not a premium brand. Number four is create your own story that people will talk about. Now, I love the example of James Squires, who, um, if you read the back of the beer bottle, tells this amazing tale of a, a pioneer using the freshest ingredients and years of trial and error to find that perfect blend. And I love the story, and it's you know it's a, it's worth telling. Um, but your your story needs to be a romantic version of the truth. You need to think about why you actually started and make this part of your story. Think about how you developed your passion and how you found the secret formula and put in your story what, what you stand for and what sort of sets you apart. Adding our, the, the, the other steps in our blueprint, we need to raise the bar. So what I mean by this is once you've sort of um, identified that position, you need to raise the bar and let other people know 
and believe that you're that trusted, respected, um, and the best in that sort of area. Um, by raising the bar, I would encourage you to um, contribute perhaps a, an article or something to local magazines or newspaper. Consider offering um, you know, a free talk at a local business meeting. But um, look for ways where things would support the fact that you are the go-to person in that area. And the last one is using the correct language and phrases um, that motivate people to take action and, and support your brand. So I, I always try and tell, um, in, in, in the story around my brand, I try and think of phrases that people would like. So things like hearing that, it, that your business has family values or that it's Australian made, um, no questions asked refund. I used to say that um, we have the most qualified and highly trained staff. And I used to make sure that our, our staff would say that each and every time someone came through the door. Um, I would say that um, when you start one of our programs, you become one of our family. And we will be there to support you and motivate you every step of the way. So other people might be trying to offer this, or they may even be offering it, but the fact that we're saying it and our staff are trained to say it at every single opportunity means that that's what you become known for, which is pretty exciting. Now, the 80-20 rule is the next thing I just wanted to cover and why premium products and premium surf services would, would work in any, uh, in, in, in any gym. Um, for those that sort of don't understand the concept, um, there was an Italian economist that realised there was a ratio that it applied to almost everything where 80% of our results come from 20% of our effort. Um, and the Perry Marshall book on sales and marketing is one I would encourage you to read. And it, it sort of gives you an understanding as a business owner and how you might be able to apply that. So 80-20, I think um, I've got a couple of examples there on the slide, but I think you sort of understand how the reason I sort of under, I, this really hit home for me was one time when I was training a, a PT client. I remember she was training three hours of PT a week. We got onto the topic of healthcare for some reason. Um, she mentioned to me that she had the top cover and I just said to her, like, you know, do you get the top cover because there's certain things that you hope to claim on? Or and she said, oh, no, we, we just get the top option in, in everything. So the, the reality is that there's 20% there's of your existing members right now that will pay to live in the, the top suburb in your area. They will pay for that top brand car. They'll buy the best bottle of wine on the list when they go to a restaurant. And the other 80% wouldn't do it, but there's 20% that always will. So if you're a gym owner that has a, a single pricing structure where everyone pays the, the same amount, you are literally leaving money on the table. And um, I encourage you to think of an example where you, you might actually be able to charge four times, eight times, even 16 times the normal weekly rate. Instead of $20 a week, you might charge $80 a week and add some extra value. Um, this is just an example. You could add whatever it is that you want and what you feel might make a, a service more valuable or more, plat more of a platinum sort of feature. But the reality is um, people will pay for it in every single gym. So we've gone through three things pretty quick. I apologize if there's just heaps of different ideas there. I'm hoping just to trigger some, um, some fresh sort of train of thought for you. But the, the reality is it doesn't matter how many new ideas or different sort of approaches I give you, there is a get off your ass catch where you actually have to go away and implement it. And it, it might require a small amount of adaptation to your gym model, but you need to be creative and the, the results will, um, will justify the, the means. I, again, I, I, I don't know exactly why you, you came to sort of join us for this webinar today. Perhaps it was the, um, the ability to add some extra profit to your gym without new members. Maybe it was um, the, the ability to cut your costs by up to 20%. Um, maybe you were sick of price wars and you just wanted to sort of reposition your gym. But the, um, the, the reality is there's, there's dozens of different techniques and we don't have time to sort of go through all of those today. The, the fastest and the most effective method really depends on your gym and your, your business sort of structure right now. 
Um, the important thing, I guess, is that we, we identify that the industry has changed, and rather than sort of resisting it and fighting it, we just start to learn what works for, for now, for 2016. Um, for that reason, that's, that's why I want to invite you along to a, a full day workshop that I've, I'm putting on in Sydney in February. Um, I've called it the Titans of the Fitness Industry. And I, I just want to slow down for a second and explain how the content, the speakers, the, the format of this event will literally make it the best thing you'll attend all year. And look, the, 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 the idea that I got for this, I, I was actually fortunate enough to sit in a, a small audience years ago and ask uh, the question of this billionaire entrepreneur. I, I said, what is the fastest way to achieve massive results in business? And he sort of answered the audience. I'm obviously there writing down as many notes as I can, but he just said, find someone who already has success and copy them. And the audience kind of laughs, and I think most people sort of just shrugged it off. But he sort of waited till everything quietened down. He said, no, no, find someone that's already successful and copy them. And, you know, that, that, that advice really stuck with me, and, um, and I've always known it to be the secret. So... What this event's about is me actually getting four of the, the country's best gym owners in one room for one workshop for, um, for Australian and New Zealand gym owners or managers um, where you, you can have that opportunity to learn from them in techniques that are working now. Um, I should stress the, these aren't okay gym owners. These are literally the titans of the fitness industry. These are the, the best gyms, the best profit, the best staff. Um, and they're coming to share what's working like right now in January 2016. Um, I just think this day will have a, a massive change in your, your paradigm. You'll, it could save you years of trial and error. Uh, it could save you heaps of money in sort of wasted marketing dollars. It's, um, yeah, it's just going to be freaking awesome. So make sure you've got that date written down. Um, the, the unique part about this one-day event is you'll walk away with a blueprint so we don't have the time to go through that sort of step-by-step -step process today, but I want you to understand that there is an actual process that the best gyms are following, and we're going to share that with you on the day. Um, the thing I must stress is this event is just for gym owners or managers. Um, it's, it's not a, like an industry event, and it's not for, for anyone else. Um, we're setting it up in a, a format uh, that's more of a workshop, where there's only space for 60 gyms to actually come along. And we want to do that so you have the opportunity to actually interact with the, the titans of fitness. We want you to be able to ask specific questions about your gym that you can go away and plug straight in in the next, like the week afterwards. Um, so I hope you understand the, the, the reason for the limited numbers. Uh, and I just don't think that sort of uh, format would, would suit if there was a thousand people in the room. Um, when you, um, the things that will sort of cover you, you actually walk away knowing that, uh, how to quickly add 300k to your bottom line. So these aren't just like rough ideas. These are things that they're using. Um, it's the systems that you can use to grow your business with or without you and how to carve out a niche so that you're not competing with others. The speakers at the event, um, excited to, to share. We've got Mark Kaplan from Tribe Social Fitness coming. Um, Mark's had three gyms. He started from scratch and sold for a great profit. Um, he's, um, I guess, one of those, those gyms that's particularly profitable because he matches his gym membership income with PT income. So they're really thriving down there in Tarrant Point. Um, he specializes in actually helping gyms get off the mark fast. He had a thousand members in the first year in, in, in that uh, business down there in Tarrant Point. He's just added a, um, a one-month body challenge. He's got 300 of his members actually taking part in that just for an additional revenue. So I think you'll, um, you'll love listening to him. Our next speaker is Ben Lucas. Ben's, um, you might recognize Ben actually from City Morning Herald or Daily Tele Telegraph. He's obviously a uh, He's a, a regular commentator on all things fitness, but um, like Mark has had experience in running multiple sites at the one time with success. 
Um, Ben's current business is called Flow Athletic in Paddington. It's a high-end facility that's known for its its service and its. Um, he's actually going to share what he's done to position that brand as premium. Our third speaker runs the busiest personal training studio in Australia, literally offering 400 hours of PT every single week. Um, he's he's actually a, a vision personal training uh, franchise owner, but not any franchise owner. This this um, studio at Willoughby has actually been the, voted the best vision franchise for six years in a row, and is literally light years um, apart from many of the other sort of fitness studios in, in Sydney and around Australia and the world. So um, I encourage you to get along and find out how you can sort of really crank up and add on then something like um, personal training into your business. Um, the four speakers myself, um, as I mentioned before, I want to show how to, to run a leverage business. So not just making good money, but I want you to show you how you can actually drop your input into the business down to 10, 12, 15 hours per week. Um, another important area, I, I'm seeing a lot of fitness businesses. I know there's value in actually sharing how to grow your business so you can maximize the profit if and when you ever decide to sell it. And I think that that can be extremely valuable. Um, the last one I want to show is how you can sort of leapfrog all this trial and error. Don't spend the next sort of 10 years trying to work out how to accelerate your business career. I want to show you steps that you can do it so you can start kind of having those holidays and living that lifestyle on the off. So what's the investment? It's, it's $199 to attend this full day event. It's literally going from 8 till 5 p.m. at Moore Park in Sydney. Um, as a, um, a guest of the webinar today, you can actually get these tickets for $69. Um, and I recommend if you've got a strong manager or a business partner, um, definitely consider them for the, the discounted ticket as well. Um, there's a money-back guarantee. I stand by the, the content and the speakers and the, I just know it's going to be so full of content um, that, and practical ideas that you'll get um, at least $50,000 worth of ideas that you can plug into your gym or I'll give you your money back. So the literally next day, money back, no questions asked. Why do I feel so confident to do it? The, the speakers that I'm inviting along alone are making millions of dollars. So if you can't take an idea away that would add 50K to your business, um, I'll literally give you your money back. Um, again, just a reminder, it, this isn't a sales tactic. It's, there's 60 tickets available. We, we released tickets, I think, four days ago, so we're down to just under 50. But if you are someone that's um, passionate about making some change in 2016, make sure you get in and actually reserve a ticket today because we've obviously got a lot of people on the webinar as well. Now, what's the next step? So I might actually get Andrew's help here. Um, there's a ticket page. You can see the URL at the bottom. You actually need to, to put that URL into your browser and visit the ticket page to go in and get and reserve your tickets. Um, Robo, are you there? Are you able to actually copy yeah, and paste Yeah, I, that I just in? sent that out to everyone, Steve. You can check the chat box, but just, Steve, can, any, can they actually access it off gymhub.com.au or do they actually have to type in the whole Titans of Fitness Live seminar? Um, I think they've actually got to go to the specific URL. So there's a, Okay, so just in case we've got anyone, in case someone's being dialed, if you're dialing in, please just send an email through and we'll get that to you, but it's gymhub.com.au forward slash titans dash of dash fitness dash live dash seminar. It's quite, um, a, it's quite a mouthful. Um, my email address, if you are one of those people that's called in today, an easy one to remember, and I can just shoot you that link back, is steve at gymhub.com.au. Um, I'll shoot you back the link straight away so you can actually get in and get the, the tickets at the discounted amount. Yeah. Now, today we sort of covered a, a whole heap of stuff. I'm, um, I, I think I'm due for a water. The, the summary of what we've sort of gone through is the fitness industry has changed. I could see that in your responses today in the chat box. 
the old rules of running a gym don't apply anymore. And we've, we've seen, you know, 70 curve franchises closed two years ago. We've seen businesses like Contours not renew. We've had the big, big wigs like Fitness First close like, or sell 16 businesses last year. This isn't just on a um, an independent sort of gyms or a small small gym sort of thing. The whole industry is affected by it. And what I'm sort of seeing in Australia and the people I'm working with, but also the ones I'm seeing that are leading the industry in the States at the moment, these are these young fitness entrepreneurs that are, are just changing their approach and, and in doing so are literally reaping the rewards. Um, the, the thing I'm so excited about is just getting each of you guys in front of our, our four guest speakers so they can just share what, what their secrets are and what they've done to, um, to position themselves at the top of the ladder. The next step, if you haven't done so already, remember you do need to, um, to take that link, put it into your browser and get the, uh, the Titans of Fitness uh, ticket page to reserve your $69 um, early bird discount. Tickets are, are usually $199 and um, you'll uh, get the opportunity. Feel, feel free to ask any questions. I'm just in, interrupting. Any questions at all, feel free to ask um, in the chat box, everyone. Um, Jordan's going to flick you an email. Steve, yep. I think Jordan Murphy. Jordan, so again, Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, at gymhub.com.au. Um, feel free to, to shoot through uh, any questions that you have there but also just hanging around online now if anyone has something I can sort of help with at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I think from sitting back and listening, um, Steve, what I, as a consumer, as someone that goes to a gym, I, I see the main focus of many gyms as is constantly finding um, new members and selling, putting out flyers and, and, and it seems like everyone's squeezing down each other's prices and, and really what you're showing here and is just a, that, that, that method doesn't work anymore, correct? Yeah, I just think um, it, it's, it makes some business sense that if you, you find something that works and maybe you got your first 200 members from doing a letterbox drop or something like that and yeah, that, that might have worked in, um, you know, 2000 or something like that, but it's um, because of the shift in the industry, because it takes us so many times where we've actually got to get in front of our, our prospects these days, um, I think it makes sense to start thinking about things like educational-based marketing instead of just reaching out each time and saying, hey, here's a week free or here's, you know, a couple of personal training sessions for free. We, we instead need to reposition ourselves so we're not like everyone else. We need to say, hey, yeah. here's some cool information. Here's some advice on how to use you know, avocado as part of your diet or here's next time you're lifting, mm -hmm. here's some technique tips. And then people start to associate you as someone that they can go to when they are ready because I think yeah. um, you know, traditional marketing is only at actually reaching out to the people that are ready right now and, you know, yeah. Of the the millions of people in Australia right now, not everyone's ready to do fitness today, and will respond to that ad. But if you've had some regular yeah. contact and they they think you know that person's the expert, um, at some point they will be ready and they'll come and track you down. Yeah, I hear you. Very good, mate. Excellent. Um, we've got one last question here. In your opinion, how does the twenty four seven gym model change the land? In your opinion, how has the twenty seven 24, 20, 24 by 7 gym model changed the <laughs> landscape or has it? Um, I, I think it's changed the landscape for the big wigs like Fitness First. And, and look, they had a phenomenal run. And I think, you know, because of that, even they got complacent and they had facilities that were run down and they had, you know, stories of service that was less than ideal. So... I actually encourage the, um, the competition to come into the industry. I think it forces us to be better at pr producing programs for people. It forces us to actually provide good service that people will talk about. Um, I, think, I think where people are struggling, particularly if they're in that space, is that 
they don't differentiate how their 24-hour model um, is different and better choice than the other three that are sort of within a, a one kilometre radius. And um, everyone has the opportunity to do it. Just because you're open for 24 hours doesn't mean you're exactly the same as them. But I think you, we just need to start putting a bit more time into differentiating ourselves and letting the public know because it's, it's all good and well if you know it and you might be getting great results and everyone might sort of love you that's in the, inside your building. But if no one else knows, um, unfortunately, they're, they're likely just to shop on prices and they'll, they'll get the lowest option somewhere else. Yeah. Very good, Steve. Well, thank you very much for that. I think you've done a great job and hopefully um, we get people coming along to this, this awesome event. So I appreciate it, mate. And um, any, anything else that you need to say before signing off? Look, for, for those guys that are registering today and you're getting your uh, tickets for the, for the one-day event, I've got a little bonus that I'll, I'll shoot out via email as well, which is my ultimate 12-month marketing calendar. I think um, this is something that if you're, you're better prepared and you're organized with your marketing, that's kind of step one. Um, this sort of event, it's, it's literally the first time I, I've wanted something like this for years and I thought, you know what, it's, I'm going to organize it. So it um, doesn't happen very often uh, to say the very least. So I encourage you, if, if you are in a position where you, you can make yourself available, you will not be disappointed. And um, I look forward to actually chatting to you guys in the breaks if you're there on the day and, and introducing you to a, a network of people that are actually making it work. Thanks for your help as well, Robbo. I appreciate it today. No worries, Steve. And um, well done, mates. And uh, signing off. Thanks, mate. See you later, guys. See you at the event.